Hi everyone. Uh, today we're going to cover step three of Robert Lifton's eight criteria for thought reform. These are things that happen to reform people's thinking from independent to groupthink. So last time we covered step one, which is controlling communication, which he called milieu control. And that's where they control communication within the group and communication outside of the group. Step two was mystical manipulation, where the person is convinced that they are there for a higher purpose. And now we're gonna talk about step three, which is demanding purity from the members. Of course, in the religious context, you expect this about moral pur purity, say that fast, purity and internal virtues. Uh, but, but that can be unattainable as a human being. But to the group, they convince you that you can see this as possible if you only follow the steps of the group, you will become completely pure. You are just believing it has or will make you as pure as a driven snow. Being pure will be seen as possible if you only follow the steps of the group. Of course, this never really happens. You just are believing that it will happen or has happened and that you're being made as pure as a driven snow. So in our group, there was this chart that they had based on the book of Genesis and other scriptures to convince us that when you receive the Holy Spirit, your nature was changed from sinful to divine. And then you could call yourself sanctified, which was a little bit more than just being set apart, which the word sanctified simply means set apart. But it was more than that. It was described as having a purity of heart and that the only thing you have to contend with is demonic spirits and the fact that you're still in a fleshly body. There is a long history about this doctrine from when John Wesley first, who taught the idea of being sanctified, uh, but who never claimed to be entirely sanctified. And he, in fact, doubted that anyone ever could be. Uh, so the, the idea was taken to the nth degree, that entire purity is the only state that God accepts. And even though looking back, I doubt if I had it and certainly never saw anyone in the group that totally had it. I thoroughly believe that I had it while I was in the group. I, I was made to believe that. So in step three, the world is divided into pure and impure, black and white morality. There's no gray areas. There is a good and bad about everything, and nothing is up for exploration or discussion. If it is, the pastor will discuss it with other pastors and get back to you, or the pastor is the final word. As a result of this type of thinking, guilt and shame, exhortations to perfection and purity are powerful control devices. And everything is drilled down to the nth degree about what you do, what you say, what you wear. It, it, I still sometimes may suffer from this to a certain extent because I'm already kind of analytical and I, I think hard about things anyway. So this was really bad for me. Um, the good and the pure are, of course, those ideas and feelings and actions which are consistent with the totalist ideology and policy. Uh, that is a statement from Robert Lifton. This mentality is that there is a pure way to do anything in life. But the purity comes from what the leaders say is pure and acceptable. And to reject that or to do something different is seen as prideful and lacking humility to receive instruction on how to stay pure and to reject that or do something different is seen as prideful. 
and lacking humility on how to stay pure or to receive instruction on how to stay pure. And anything you do other than what the leaders say is doomed to failure. There is no gray area in this third step with totalist thinking. And this is what Robert Lifton calls totalist thinking. Gray areas are areas when it comes to ethics and morality that everybody has. Uh, gray area is okay. It's okay to be neutral and not have a clear or direct stance about something because you can see opinions from both sides. You are more so socially and emotionally aware when you do this. Because you understand that ethically there may be a more to a situation than a yes or a no. Gray areas where two or more courses of action are available and neither one are inherently right or wrong seems to be a problem in groups like this. In a cult, right or wrong is decided basically by someone else. And pure and impure are based on forces outside of yourself, not from your own thinking. So guess what? This is actually takes all of the guesswork out of being accountable for your own actions. Ha, <laughs> look at that. I answer to God, but my leaders have told me to do this. And so I'm supposed to follow their directors, right? So I'm not accountable. <sighs> what a spiritual mess. So Robert Lifton said the individual comes to apply the same totalist polarization of good and evil to all of his judgments of his own character. He also must look upon his impurities as originating from outside influences. When an individual person has experienced the totalist polarization of good and evil, he has a great difficulty or he has great difficulty in regaining a more balanced inner sensitivity to the complexities of human morality. Yes, life is complex. Everything is not black and white. There are gray areas. And, and see, this idea is perpetuated by being in this mode of continuous reform. I'm always working to be better and better, but this is, it, it's not in a good way, it's in a bad way. You as a person are striving to reach something that does not exist and is really alien to the whole human condition. We are made to make mistakes. We are this part of life to make mistakes and not see everything in black and white and pure and impure. This is why we have to navigate life for ourselves. Pray about direction. Uh, if you believe in prayer and take responsibility for our own conclusions that we come to, not foist them off on the group and say, well, they said that was right. This has taught me to grow as a person, to really escape this type of systematic indoctrin indoctrination and if you've experienced this type of black and white thinking, you know that your, your growth really got stunted by this thinking. If you've experienced this, you know, start a conversation below. I, I love to hear from people that have escaped these groups. And as always, if you got out, you won. And go on and live your best life. Stay free and bye for now.